To be a leader requires one thing and one thing only, followers. That's it. It has nothing to do, nothing to do with rank or title. It has to do with whether others are going to choose to volunteer, raise their hands and volunteer to go in the direction that you set. We can force people to do things. We can whip them into shape or offer them all kinds of carrots and sticks to get them to do things. But at the end of the day, a true leader is the one where others raise their hand and says, and say, I will follow you. The question is, why should anyone follow you? Now, the human animal is like a company. We want to get certain behaviors out of the organization, out of people. We give them certain incentives or disincentives. We are exactly the same. If you want someone to perform, if you want them to hit a goal, we set the target, we set the goal, we offer them some sort of bonus if they get there, and we incentivize the behavior. If we threaten someone with a punishment, we disincentivize the behavior. Wait till your father comes home. You know, anyone who's a parent with gold stars or bonuses or all kinds of things, we're, we're used to this. This is normal human body works exactly the same way. If you've ever had a feeling of love, trust, joy, fulfillment, status, pride, those are all chemically produced feelings. They're chemically produced incentives trying to get us, the human body's trying to get us to do certain things to get us to cooperate. Tangible matters. We can only, we can only see the things we have words for, right? And this is why the leader must provide a clear vision why are we doing this? Why are we in business in the first place? What is the point of growing the company that you're growing? Everybody talks about, what's your goal? growth? What, what's the point of the growth? In other words, you have a company. Why do you have that company? What is the value your company is offering to others? And, and what, what do you want your company to leave behind when you're gone? There has to be a purpose for why your company exists beyond the things you make, beyond the things you do, beyond the money you make. You had the purpose when you founded the company, otherwise you wouldn't have taken the crazy risk to start it with the overwhelming chance of failure. And people wouldn't have given you blood, sweat, and tears if they didn't believe in you because you were the alpha, you had the vision, you had the strength, and they wanted your protection. And they joined you, and they gave you their blood, sweat, and tears because you gave them a sense of purpose and belonging and protection. You have to know why you do what you do, and this is what the leaders do. And the more they can put it into words, the clearer they can put it into the words, the more we can see it. Again, we can only see the things we have words for. And so when you can put these things into words, other people can see them. I have a dream. Martin Luther King put into words the vision seeing he had. The rest of us could see it too, and now could focus all of our attention, all of our efforts on getting it done. And every metric, and this is the purpose of metrics, every metric we use is, a, is, to, is, to, is it's not about the metric. Metrics are supposed to measure progress. In other words, each metric is the tree getting a little bigger. Each, each metric is us getting a little closer to the gazelle. We get another little shot of dopamine. Each metric shows us that we're getting closer to the vision. It's not just about the numbers at the end of the year. How do we do? We're up. Good. Towards what? Towards what? We don't know what we're getting closer to. And it makes work unfulfilling. Don't know what we're working towards. Dopamine. We don't care if we let down the goal. Like if we have a goal that we have to achieve for work and we miss the goal, do we feel bad that we let the numbers down? No. We feel bad that we let somebody we love down. We feel bad that we let down our boss, we let down our parents, we let down our coach, we let down our drill instructor. We feel bad when we let down a human being. Accountability is never to a number. Accountability is to a person. And if there is no relationship, the person who's supposed to look after us and the person we're supposed to be working for, then we don't feel accountable. And this is where leadership becomes really, really important. You see, when we give selflessly, to those in our tribe, offering them protection. Because that's all anybody wants at work. They want to feel safe, comfortable, protected. Think about it as a parent. You know, back in those days, there were no countries, there were no corporations, there were no companies. They didn't exist. There's only one thing that pre-existed, all of those things. The family. That's all we had. 